I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand the importance of complement events. So normally in our sample space we are talking about a particular event of our interest. Let us say event A of our interest is this event right and the sample space is shown here. Then whatever is outside A is called complement of A, right? So this part which is outside is A prime. Sometimes we also write in different ways, right? Which could be kind of like this. Okay. So what you observe here is that combination of these two is the whole sum of outputs or outcomes, right? So the combination of probability of A and the probability of A prime or complement is equal to 1. So that is the concept which we can use to solve some questions. Here is an example. What is the probability that a randomly drawn integer between 1 to 50 is not a perfect square? So we are saying we want to draw an integer between 1 to 50 and that should not be a perfect square. Now there are 50 numbers. Now which one of these are perfect squares? Let's list them. Well first, what is, what are all the possible outcomes when we draw one integer? We have 50 is the possible outcomes. Now how many of them are favorable? Now we say not perfect square. So, so there are a lot of numbers, but we can easily count those which are perfect squares. So let's think about those outcomes which are perfect squares. So, so when I say n of a prime, which is complement of our probability, that means we are looking for uh, perfect squares in this case. So out of these 50 numbers, which are perfect squares. Okay, so that is complement to what we need. So that has been introduced to us as n of a complement, right? Now, it's easy to find the perfect squares from the numbers 1 to 50. For example, 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 4 square is 16, 5 is 25, 6 is 36, 7 is 49, and 8 is 64, right? So straight away, we know 7 square is 49, which is less than 50. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 perfect squares, correct? So this gives you an idea that the complementary function, the number of outcomes which are favorable to perfect squares is 7, right? Now, if you find the probability of drawing a perfect square, then we can find its complement also using this formula, right? We know the sum of these two is 1. So what is the probability of finding the complement? It will be 1 minus Pa, right? So that is what we are kind of working on now. So what we do in this case is we find the complement. So in our case, we have to find probability of A. We find the complement. So we could write this as Pa prime. So either way, this formula can work, correct? So let's find the probability of getting a perfect square. Probability of getting perfect square will be 7 out of 50, correct? Therefore, the probability of getting not a perfect square will be 1 minus 7 over 50, correct? So that gives us the answer. 50 minus 7, which is 43, 43 over 50. Is that okay? Now, you could do it like this, or you could also do from here. 
in our sample space we have 50 possible outcomes out of these 50 seven are perfect squares so which ones are not perfect squares 50 minus 7 which is 43 and then you can find the probability directly also anyway I hope this example helps you to understand how complement of an event can help you to find probability of an event. I'm Anil Kumar. You can share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.